Hey everyone, it's Bazza here from Living in Beta, and we're here today with another boss breakdown, this time for the Valiant Gargoyles. From love their 2 on 1 bosses, and Elden Ring continues that tradition. We'll be going over their spawn location, moveset, as well as some potential strategies to give you a better chance of grabbing victory. Let's get into the video. The Valiant Gargoyles can be found in Nokron, the Eternal City. The closest point of grace is the Siofra Aqueduct, and there is also a stake of Marika outside the boss door, which is handy. I use magic for this boss, utilising Swift Glintstone Shard. This, alongside the Radigan Talisman, allow for super quick cast times as well as minimal stamina usage. For my stats, my highest level was Intelligence at 46, raised to 51 with the Twin Sage Glintstone Crown. My second highest stat was Mind at 20, my HP was 472, FP was 100, and stamina was 91. For my left and right hand equipment, I use the Meteorite Staff as well as the Carrion Knight Shield. A 100% physical shield is highly recommended for this fight, as the vast majority of the Gargoyle's attacks can be blocked. My outfit consisted of the Twin Sage Glintstone Crown, Astrologer's Robe, Rhea Lucarian Gauntlets, and Mausoleum Knight Greaves. A quick note on the headgear. It increases intelligence by 5, but as a trade-off also reduces HP and stamina. Worth keeping in mind if you're going to choose it yourself. In the talisman slot, I used the Radigan Talisman, which reduces the cast time of sorceries. My flask allocation was 2 HP flasks to 6 FP flasks. Finally, my flask of wondrous physic was a mix of opaline bubble tier, which provides a damage shield, as well as magic shrouding crack tier, which temporarily boosts magic attacks. As you begin the fight, you will be up against a single valiant gargoyle, which initially wields a sword. As the fight goes on, they will swap between the sword and a halberd, which of course also changes up their attacks. The second gargoyle will enter the arena with a twin blade, and will alternate between this and a great axe, again with their moveset changing depending on the weapon. To kick things off we have the lunge performed by the first gargoyle. The boss will pull back their sword before lunging forward towards your character. You can either block this attack, roll, or run towards the camera, out of range. Take care of running though, as the attack reach is longer than you think. Next up we have the golf swing. Gargoyle number one will take a defensive stance, holding their sword with both hands on their left side. They will then take a step forward and swing. Again, you can either block, roll, or run out of range. Coming next, we have the sword combo. Take care as this starts with the same animation as the golf swing. The boss will slash in front of them four times before slamming the sword down directly in front of them. I found the most effective way of dealing with this and the golf swing is to run away from the boss as soon as they perform the wind-up animation. It makes it much easier to deal with rather than expecting one attack and receiving another. If you are too close to the boss to run, you can of course block and roll. However, due to the amount of swings, it will likely eat through your stamina bar if relying solely on blocking, catching you with at least one of the swings. Up next we have the single slash. Gargoyle number one will run a few steps before slashing across to their right side. Rolling or blocking are your best options here. If you're struggling with the timing, rely on your shield. The next attack occurs when in close vicinity of gargoyle number one. The boss will grab their sword with both hands and slam directly downwards before slicing to their right. If you're quick enough, when you see the wind up, simply run backwards. Otherwise you can roll and block or roll through both attacks. For our next attack we have the 3 hit combo. The boss will raise their sword up to their right, readying a slash before slashing twice diagonally and then finally lunging forward. Again, as with most of their initial attacks, you can either roll through each or rely on a combination of blocking and rolling. Be careful not to run after the initial 2 slashes as the boss will likely counter hit you with the lunge which could result in death. The next attack is a heavy hitter if caught. The gargoyle will raise their sword up to the sky with a white energy engulfing the weapon. They will then slam the sword down, creating a straight line shockwave. When you see the boss charging this up, run either side and ready a roll, rolling just before the shockwave impacts your character. When the first gargoyle swaps from their sword to their halberd, they will reach back with their left hand and retrieve the weapon from their back, before performing a hurricane slash. Back off when this happens, or perform a roll or block. Worth noting here, you can stand fairly close without risking damage. The boss's moveset will now change. First up for the halberd, we have the charging thrust and subsequent slam down. The boss will raise their halberd up to their left before bringing the weapon down in front of them and charging forward. Roll out of the way of the initial charge and then time your second roll just as the boss impacts during the slam down. You're then free to get in some hits or use a flask. If you're hit with the charge, your iframes should save you from the slam down. You can also block the initial hit and roll the second. It's worth noting that the boss can change the second half of this attack to be a sweep if they begin the attack close to you. This can catch you out if you're expecting a dive as the sweep is quick. Next we have the double sweep. 
The first gargoyle will raise their halberd up slowly to their left side, readying a swing, before bringing the weapon down to the ground and sweeping around twice. When you notice this attack winding up, you can either roll through both swings, run out of range, or block. Our next attack sees the boss flying back, raising their halberd to their right, before swooping down and slashing. The easiest way to avoid this is blocking, however a well-timed dodge will allow you to get some attacks in or drink a flask, so is advisable. Coming next is the Hurricane Slam. The gargoyle will jump up, raising their halberd to their right side before returning to the ground. They will then swing their halberd around twice, creating a wind effect, before ending the attack with a diving slam. You can run out of range, or roll the initial swings. The closer, it's best to roll, as then you're free to attack or use a flask. The final impact will knock you back slightly. Our next attack sees the boss fly before slamming their halberd down. They will then repeat this action a second time. Again, rolling or blocking works best here. The next attack sees gargoyle number one puke a poisonous substance. This will usually happen when you're in their close vicinity. Run out of range and get some attacks in or use a flask. When gargoyle number one switches back to their sword, they will grab the weapon with their right hand before swinging around and slashing as they go. Once you've taken down gargoyle number one to about half health, their friend will make their entrance, the twin blade gargoyle. At this point, the fight becomes a juggling act, with the gargoyles taking turns trying to put you in the ground. One being aggro, whilst the other paces behind or pukes a poisonous substance. The switch in aggro is signalled by the aggro gargoyle jumping back, meaning the other gargoyle is now in the driver's seat. However, the gargoyle which jumped back can swap back immediately to being aggro. Yeah, this boss is a little messy sometimes. There will be times when both gargoyles are throwing aggression your way. This can be difficult to handle, to say the least. The best advice I can give is to try to always keep your camera with both gargoyles in view. Also, pay close attention to when the gargoyle currently on your tail jumps back, as this usually signals the aggro swap, as long as they don't then immediately come forward. Lastly, be sure to glance back at the non-aggro gargoyle every few seconds, as they will be intermittently puking the aforementioned poisonous substance, which has a long range and can quickly eat away your HP. Moving on now to the second gargoyle, first up we have the Death Nado. If used as a gap closer, the boss will begin the attack by spinning their twin blade around rapidly like a propeller. They will then dive into the air before landing. The landing portion can damage you, as well as a subsequent wind blast. From my experience, the damage on this attack seems a little inconsistent. If you block the landing portion, you should be safe. However, you can also roll and block. This is risky though, as after the roll, you can be hit by the wind wall. You could also double roll, however this requires precise timing. The boss can also initiate this attack with a sweep and swing if you're in their vicinity. The safest option here looks to be to block the landing phase. Coming next for the second gargoyle is the jumping slash. The gargoyle will jump towards you, raising their twin blade to a horizontal position on their left side, before landing and slashing. Roll just before the point of impact. You can of course also block this attack. For our next attack, the second gargoyle will raise their twin blade to their right side before digging down and slashing upwards. You can either roll or block this attack. Next up is the triple slash combo. The second gargoyle will raise their twin blade up to their left before slashing across to their right, following up with a slash to their left as they turn around, and a closer with a final slash to their right. You can utilise a combination of rolling and blocking, or simply focus on one. Up next is the sweep and stab. Gargoyle number two will run at your character while swinging their blade before jumping and stabbing their weapon downwards. Rolling works well here. The next attack sees gargoyle number two slash in a sweeping motion towards you, before closing on a horizontal slash. This is usually used as a gap closer. You can block the second hit. Another combo sees the second gargoyle slash twice, once to their right and once to their left, before ending in a jumping slam. Rolling back on the initial slash should keep you safe from the follow up. Time your final roll with the impact of the twin blade during the slam. When the second gargoyle weapon swaps to their great axe, they will place their twin blade on their back, grasping their great axe and readying a power slam while screaming. They will proceed to slam the axe into the ground in front of them, which creates a mini earthquake. If you're in close vicinity, ensure you roll twice, once for the axe impact and again for the quake. Next we have the swing and slam down. The second gargoyle will turn away from you readying a swing. As they come back round, they will drag their axe along the ground before swiping upwards. The closer sees them slam their axe back down. You can roll through both of these attacks. Roll once and block the other or block both. Another variation of this attack sees the gargoyle throw a third move in, jumping back before coming forward for a final axe slam. Coming next we have the empowered swipe and slam. The second gargoyle will scream with an empowered aura enveloping them. They will then drag their axe along the ground before swinging upwards towards their right. The closer sees the axe being slammed down and creating a mini quake after a short delay before a final axe slam is performed, 
If in close vicinity, be sure to roll the slam, quake, and final slam during the closeup. The next attack starts with the second gargoyle performing an overhead slam with their axe, before jumping back and running whilst performing a half moon sweep. Roll the initial slam, and then ready yourself for the coming sweep, rolling just before the axe impacts you. You can of course block if you're not confident with the timing. Up next we have the stomp and slice. The second gargoyle will reel back, raising their left foot before stomping down. They will follow this up with a sweeping slice. Take care of the initial stomp as this can stagger you, leaving you open for the follow up slice. When the second gargoyle swaps back for their twin blade, you'll see them reach back with their left hand before twirling the blade and ending with a slice. Next we have the single diagonal slash. The second gargoyle will raise their twin blade overhead before slicing down to their right. A simple roll will work well here, or block if you're caught short. Finally, to close, we have the double overhead slam. The boss will raise their great axe up before slamming down twice in front of them. There is also a variation where the boss will slam only once. I found backpedaling or running back to be the easiest way to avoid this. This fight is all about juggling the aggro, so it relies heavily on camera management as well as considered use of flasks. As both bosses carry two weapons each, there's a fair number of moves to memorise. However, once you get these down, your focus can switch to damage output. Ensure you keep an eye on the trailing gargoyle, running out of the AoE of their poison spew. If you're using ranged or magic, the bosses take more damage if hit in the head. Try to avoid running around the arena, as this can leave you wide open for a counter hit which will likely end your run. Patience is key here. Try and focus on the aggro gargoyle rather than trying to burst down the one you currently have low. This can sometimes work but it's very high risk as you're basically blind to the second gargoyle. If possible, Aim to keep both gargoyles within your camera view. The biggest mistake you can make here is rushing or using a panic flask. The bosses will have downtime which will allow you flask usage. Ensure you stay focused and eventually your discipline will reward you. Taking down the pair of valiant gargoyles will reward you with one gargoyle greatsword, one gargoyle twin blade and 32,000 runes. Well guys, that's been our boss breakdown of the Valiant Gargoyles. A tough but rewarding fight. Let us know in the comments if you fought the Valiant Gargoyles yet and how you fared. If you enjoyed this content, drop us a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. As always, we'll catch you in the next one.